Do you think creatine is just for building muscle? Think again. So most people think of creatine as a muscle building supplement, but its benefits go way beyond the gym. Thanks to newer research spread via all the sexy podcasts, the tide is turning and people are realizing that creatine boosts brain function, protects the heart, and even plays a role in long-term health. So as an unofficial shill for big protein, I want to kind of give you a lay of the land. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how creatine works, who should take it, and some of the real science behind its effects. We're going to bust some myths along the way. So what you'll learn today is how creatine fuels both the body and the brain, its role in heart health, concussion recovery, from kiddos to older folks, and some nuance about the safety, hydration, caffeine, things like that. So let's start with the basics. What is creatine? Creatine is a naturally occurring compound in the body that acts as a rapid energy source. So your body uses it to recharge ATP, which is the fuel that powers Every muscle contraction, brain function, heartbeat, everything in your body is driven by ATP, and creatine is there to help push ATP. Creatine is made from three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. And since amino acids aren't steroids, creatine isn't a steroid, so we can put that millennial high school myth to rest. So where is creatine stored? About 95% of creatine is stored in your skeletal muscles. So think like your biceps, your quads, your glutes, your abs. It is stored in your skeletal muscles. The other 5% fuels the brain, the heart, and even your kidneys. And so that should be intuitive as to why creatine isn't just about strength. It's about energy for your entire body. Creatine is there to push ATP. It doesn't care where. How does creatine actually work? So I've been talking a lot about ATP and energy. Think of ATP as your body's energy currency. Every time you move, think, blink, your body spends ATP. Creatine helps recycle ATP faster. So you can lift heavier, think clearer, recover better, do the things that require ATP better. So because the largest body of my work is in concussion and post-concussion, let's talk about creatine and brain function for a second. Your brain is sort of an energy hog. At baseline, we think that your brain uses about 20% of your entire body's ATP just to function, just to rest. We're not talking about doing your SATs. We're not talking about studying. We're not talking about working, conversing. Just at baseline, your brain uses about 20% of your ATP. So what we're finding is newer research is showing that when we supplement with creatine, we can improve memory. We can improve reaction time. We can improve focus, especially if you're sleep deprived or you're getting older. So we find that improving ATP production improves brain function. One exciting study for new parents when I found out about this is that a single dose of creatine improved cognitive performance in sleep deprived people. And what we find is that long term use leads to even bigger benefits. So we've got continually emerging research in the concussion world that supplementing with creatine may support recovery. We find that improves the brain energy metabolism, which is one of the crucial factors in acute concussion. And we find that it potentially reduces symptoms like headache, dizziness, brain fog by having more energy. I've been singing this song in the concussion world since 2019. I'm like a creatine hipster. So some of these studies indicate that normal dosing of like five grams up to 10 grams, some of the data goes up to 20 to 30 grams, but even that five to 10 gram dose may offer benefits. More research is definitely needed to kind of confirm the optimal doses and ranges and long-term effects. But right now it appears quite safe tolerable and useful. Even the military, the US military has explored creatine's role in protecting brain function in high risk scenarios. And again, this research is still involving, but just as a side note, when the US military is looking into something seriously, think about it, it's probably useful. So now let's talk about why creatine is still just the king of performance supplements. It's one of the oldest, most studied, most safe, most used. Creatine increases max strength, sprint speed, and explosive power. Depending on the study, you'll see ranges of 5 to 15%. Because of the way energy systems in your body work, you have the creatine phosphate or the phosphagen system, the glycolytic system, and then the aerobic system. And that phosphagen system is really useful for short, high-intensity efforts, sprinting, jumping, slap shots, punches, explosive things. We find that it might actually reduce surrogate markers of muscle damage, so it might reduce creatine kinase and lactate dehydrogenase, which we could assume assume means faster recovery between workouts and maybe even a lower injury risk from creatine supplementation. I wouldn't run too fast with that one, but we also know just from how creatine is stored is that it pulls water into your cells. That's where the initial kind of like pump and bloat and like weight gain might come from is just water weight. But what we find with that is that the hydration may actually reduce muscle cramping, not cause it. And the idea that creatine may dehydrate you, not, not true. The evidence doesn't pan out. So how much creatine should you take? Keep in mind, I am a doctor. I am not your doctor. Just because you heard something here on YouTube doesn't mean you should do it. Don't go win a Darwin Award. Talk to your licensed healthcare professional about 
adding, changing, tweaking anything. With that said, there's two options. So you got a loading phase and you've got a no loading phase. You just have like sort of maintenance doses and then loading doses. And this is more from the performance world. So a loading phase would be 20 grams a day for about a week for five to seven days. And then you would go to your three to five grams for maintenance. So for most people, that's going to be, depending on the product, around three to four scoops a day. And then you'll go down to one scoop a day. So you'll load at three to four and then go down to one. If there's no loading, which you, there's not really evidence that you need to load, you would just take your one scoop a day consistently and you'll see that creatine levels will build over two to four weeks. So unless for some reason you need that burst of creatine, you don't really need to load. Which type of creatine is best? Do you need buffered? Do you need this? Do you need that? Creatine monohydrate. It is the plain old white powder creatine. It is the most researched, most effective, and cheapest. You don't need fancy, updated, chelated, whatever versions. How long until it works? So with daily use, a creatine reaches full effect in two to four weeks or faster if you load. And when we see the full effect, it's that we measure your muscles are saturated with it. It is available for ATP production and use. So now I wanted to spend some time clearing up four of some of the most common myths I hear around creatine and some of the reservations that people have around creatine. And myth one is that creatine damages your kidneys. So creatine has been studied for decades, even at 30 grams per day for up to five years, there's no evidence of kidney damage in healthy individuals. This is again why you don't want to win a Darwin Award. If you're someone who already has a kidney issue or you don't know you have one, don't go super dosing 30 grams a day of creatine, but just know that if you are an otherwise healthy individual, creatine is not going to damage your kidneys. Myth number two is that it dehydrates you and subsequently will cause muscle cramps. We already kind of addressed that, but creatine actually helps with hydration. It pulls water into your cells and increases water retention. It's not going to dehydrate you and may even decrease your risk of muscle cramping. This is sort of a newer myth for the nutrition bros and kind of the gym bros is that creatine cancels out the effects of caffeine. So caffeine doesn't kill creatine, but you to maintain muscle benefits and maximal contraction, you maybe don't want to take them together. You maybe want to space them out a little bit, but creatine and caffeine, particularly when the caffeine is dosed at like 200 milligrams or less, there's no real interaction. And then last, this one scared me. It just it goes to show that my hairline is receding just because it's receding. The myth is that creatine causes hair loss. No studies have demonstrated a direct link between creatine and hair loss. There was one study that found a temporary increase in a DHT, dihydrotestosterone, but there was no actual hair thinning or balding observed in the study, and that study hasn't been repeated. So wrapping it up, who actually benefits from creatine? Who should be taking creatine? Again, as I said in the beginning, I'm sort of a shill for big creatine. People think that I probably work for big creatine. If big creatine was a thing, I probably would. But what we find is that almost everyone would benefit. So athletes and people strength training, more power, better endurance, faster recovery. Why wouldn't you want it? Sleep deprived individuals. So new parents, you're going to have improved focus, memory, reaction time, things that are helpful if you don't want to drop a baby. That's a bad joke. TBI and concussion patients. So this is something I've been doing since 2019, but a potential support for brain energy metabolism and thus improving things like headaches, dizziness, brain fog, etc. As like an actual clinical note, creatine is one of the supplements that all of my patients feel. So some patients have gone as extreme to say, it feels like someone turned the lights on in my brain. And then other patients think that nothing happened. They're like, creatine didn't do anything for me. They stop taking it and they go, oh, wow, it was actually giving me a lot more energy reserve to do the rehab, to do different things throughout my day. And then as more and more research comes out, we're seeing that it benefits aging populations. So combating muscle loss and cognitive decline in folks that are at risk of neurodegeneration or folks who are at risk of sarcopenia, aging populations benefit from creatine. So now you know some fun party facts about creatine. Have you ever tried creatine? Did you notice a difference? Drop a comment below. Love to hear your experiences. Let me know how it goes. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell, do all the YouTube things. It's free for you. It helps me. I'm super grateful for it. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark.